But before we take the Lord's Supper, let's go into the Word of God tonight into uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and uh, beginning with verse 23. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, if you have it, say praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. Amen. Uh, we're going to take the Lord's Supper tonight. And if you are baptized in water, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost, amen. Amen. Then you are able to receive that tonight. Praise God. Amen. Because it is for, this is one thing that is for the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And the Lord wants to save everybody, but this is for the body of Christ. Uh, so keep that in mind. Amen. Okay, verse 23, if you have it, say amen. amen. Paul says this, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and we had given thanks, he made, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Father, we come before you right now. We thank you, Lord God. For your awesome word, we receive it as your word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. So this morning we talked about the wedding feast, amen. And those that were invited to come to that feast, and many of them said they would come but did not show up, and therefore brought the judgment of God upon them, amen. Also talked about a man that went into the, to a feast that did not have the wedding garment on, and he was also cast out into outer darkness because of that, because the garment speaks of the Holy Ghost and water baptism in Jesus' name. Tonight, when we come to take the Lord's Supper, this is a preview of what the Lord was talking about this morning in His Word, praise God, about that marriage feast. Passover looks forward to Calvary. You know Passover. Calvary looks back, amen, when we take the Lord's Supper, it looks back to Calvary, but it also looks to the Lord's Supper in the marriage supper of the Lamb in the future. Let's look here at a few verses here and give you some understanding about the Lord's Supper before we receive it. Amen. So verse 23, for I have received of the Lord. Who? Of the Lord. Number one, when you take the Lord's Supper, you are confessing the Lord Jesus. You are putting your faith in his Lordship. Number two, you're putting faith in his supper. Number three, you're putting faith in his invitation. Number four, you're putting faith in the body. And what I mean by that, the church of the living God, you believe that Jesus is in the midst of that people, that he dwells in the body of Christ. So let me say it again. When we take the Lord's Supper, we are saying, I put my faith in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I put my faith in his supper, his name, and in the body, the church of the living God. Amen? Amen. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Praise so Paul said, for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Amen? So when we look at this and we understand that he took bread, what does that mean? 
When he gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of who? Me. So what we're doing when we come also, we're saying, Lord, I cannot do anything without you in my life. Amen. I recognize you're the head of the body, the church of the living God. So I'm confessing that I can't do anything without him. But because the Bible says his, his body, this bread represents his body, I am looking beyond the bread to God. If you can't see beyond the bread to God, you're wasting your time to take the supper. You have to look beyond the bread. You have to look beyond the elements of the wine and the bread or the fruit of the vine and the bread and see God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it tells us here that this body rep, or this bread represents his body that was broken for us. What did he do for us then? Well, when I take this supper tonight, it's not that the Lord is in this literally physically. But what it is is an emblem. It's a, it's a representation of his body and his blood. Amen. Praise God. But there's a very spiritual thing that happens when we take this supper. Does everybody understand that? Because we're looking beyond the elements and we're looking to God. We're looking to Jesus, his body that was broken for us, his blood that was shed uh, for us. But when we take this, this bread tonight, we are saying, Lord, we believe that you have provided healing for our bodies. We believe, Lord God, because you're alive tonight that you left sickness and you left death in the tomb, in the grave. You left it there, praise God. Sickness and death is in the tomb tonight. Hallelujah. And so when I take this bread tonight, I'm looking beyond the bread to his body. And I understand when I receive that, that there is healing that comes to my body. If you're sick tonight in your body, it doesn't matter what it is. If you have faith, in what Jesus Christ did for you when he took those stripes upon his back. If you have faith in that when you take this bread, you're saying, Lord, I'm going to eat this bread tonight. It represents your body. I'm looking beyond the bread, and I understand that you heal my body. It doesn't matter if you've got a cardio cardiovascular sickness or disease in your body. It doesn't matter what kind of sickness it is. Maybe it's with the endocrine system in your body. Maybe the circulatory system of your body. Whatever it is that is wrong with you tonight, maybe your kidneys, maybe your heart, and maybe your lungs, and maybe all kinds of things. You may have a blood disease. You may have all kinds of, of sicknesses and disease in your body. But Jesus Christ shed that or broke his body for you so that you and I could be healed. And when I take this bread, I'm saying, Lord, I've got faith in the reality that what you did for me in your body, that brings healing to me tonight in Jesus' name. I'm healed body. I'm healed soul. I'm healed spiritually in the name of the Lord. The Bible says when they walked out of Egypt in the Passover days, they had the lamb on the inside of them. And when they walked out having the lamb on the inside of them, the Bible said there was not one feeble man among them. It didn't matter how young they were or how old they were. There was not one feeble one among them. Why? Because they were feeding on the lamb of God inside of them. Therefore, a miracle took place that night. The Passover night, a miracle took place when they walked out. Everybody that was there that took that lamb, not one of them was sick. A miracle took place that night when they walked out and everybody was healed by the power of the lamb that was on the inside of them in Jesus' name. Tonight, you can leave this place without any sickness in your body, without any disease in your body. A miracle can take place, but you have to see beyond the bread tonight. And understand what he did. He gives me strength from my weakness. He gives me health from my sickness. He gives me forgiveness for my sin. When I understand what it means, hallelujah, to the Lamb. Verse 25, after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament or the New Covenant in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. We're remembering what Jesus Christ did for us, but we're also remembering him. That means we're putting his body back together tonight. Amen. Everybody understand that? For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread 
and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Therefore, I'm coming into his presence tonight when I take this supper and I'm renewing my faith. I'm renewing my commitment. I'm renewing the covenant to, that I have with my God. I'm making sure that I've got my sins under the blood. I'm making sure that I don't have aught against my brother or against my sister. I'm coming with a heart, but I come in repentance, but I leave with assurance. If you didn't come tonight with repentance, don't take this supper because you will take it unworthily. So you come in repentance, but you leave with assurance in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat the bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body of the Lord, the blood and body of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation or judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. What that means is that we now understand what we're doing when we take this supper. You can take it lightly, hallelujah. You can take the bread which represents his body and the fruit of the vine which represents his blood and not have a clue about what it means. So we have to discern. That's why I'm teaching you what I'm teaching you tonight. But it's more than just a discerning about what Jesus did in his body. It's also the need to discern the body of Christ. If I don't discern the body of Christ, which means this, I don't discern that God is in you. I don't discern that the lamb is in you. I don't discern that Jesus is in you. I just look at you as a person, a human being, and that's it. I don't recognize that God is in my brother and God is in my sister. And I must have a right heart and a right attitude toward my brother and my sister because God the lamb dwells in the midst of his body. So when I take this supper tonight, I'm saying, Lord, I have faith in the reality, not only of your death and burial, but in, in the reality of your living. You're alive in the midst of your people. You're alive in the body of Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. In fact, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter over, verse 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. You are the body of Christ, and I must discern that. If I don't, then I, I'm not worthy to take this supper tonight. Do you have aught against a brother here or a sister in this church? Do you have unforgiveness in your heart toward them? Tonight, you've got to take care of business. You've got to forgive them as Jesus forgave them. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters, tonight. We have to understand that God is in my brother and God is in my sister, even though at times it doesn't look like they're doing what they should do. But that's nonetheless the body of Jesus Christ. For one by, by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free and have been made all to drink unto one spirit amen you are the church you are the body of Christ so act like it and be filled with the spirit of the living God and discern that God is in the midst of his church tonight would you give the Lord praise in the house where two or three are together, gathered together in his name, there he is he, in the midst of us. It don't matter how many here tonight, how many's out of town. God is here. That's what's important in his church, in his body. Some people have this idea when they go to church, and I'm going to show you what they have. Here's their ideal. They sit back and say, God, you do the work. Lord, your spirit, let your spirit do it tonight. You don't discern the body. Because the Spirit doesn't do anything except He do it through the body. You want God to move, you got to move. If you want the Spirit of God to do something, then you got to let the Spirit of God do it through you. It's not like, okay, God, here I am. Do it. He don't do that. He's going to do it through you. Say, I'm going to discern the body tonight. Woo. God lives in your life. Let God manifest himself through you. If you don't, 
You're not any better than the nominal world. You're not any better than the denominational church who wouldn't know God if they met him in Walmart. You've got God in you, brothers and sisters. And when you come to the house of God, you move as the body of Christ. You yield to the Spirit of God like you should yield to the Spirit of God and not say, okay, Jesus, do the work. If you say that, you don't discern the Lord's body. Give the Lord praise in the house. So if I don't discern the Lord's body, he said, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. He said, there's some people that are dead right now and they're sick in their body right now because they don't discern the body of who? Christ. The body of Christ, the anointed body of Christ is the church of the living God. Do you understand that? I'm going to say something that might shock you. It was the Christ that died at Calvary. Not Jesus. You don't understand what I'm saying to you tonight. Jesus is God. The name of the Son, the Bible said, He received that name by inheritance from the Father. So the name of Jesus is the Father. So the Father didn't die, but the cross, the Christ did. The Christ did. The body of Jesus died on Calvary's tree. You can't kill the eternal God, but the Christ of God, the body of Christ died. So I come tonight in repentance because I don't want to take the body and blood of Jesus Christ unworthy and get sick and also uh, sleep, amen, and weak. <laughs> Praise God. See what God offers you tonight, these awesome blessings and the power of healing in your body, forgiveness of sins, which this represents. If you take it, it can have the reverse effect if you take it the wrong way. Now, this might be coming too strong for you. It might be too heavy for you. But I don't want you to die tonight. I don't want you to get sick in your body. I don't want you to get weak because you don't understand what Jesus did at Calvary. Nor do you understand the working of God's Spirit through the church. Verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves. Here we go. We would judge ourselves. We would not be judged. By who? by God but when we are judged we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world therefore I come tonight in repentance but after I get through repenting and breaking myself before God and say, Lord, forgive me for not understanding what you did for me at Calvary. Forgive me for not moving in the spirit like I should. Forgive me for saying, God, here I am, so you do it for me. Help me understand, God. I'm in the body and I'm in the church of the living God and I must yield to his spirit and move with him. That means that if I have unforgiveness in my heart, it has to go. That means if I have ought against my brother and my sister tonight, it has to go. It cannot remain and you take this at the altar of Jesus Christ. Because God is inside of his people. Give the Lord praise in the house. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. That, what does it mean, tarry? It means you love the person. You prefer them above yourself. You prefer them above, hallelujah, yourself. You come in forgiveness uh, and you desire that they live and not die. If any man hunger, let him eat at home that you come not together unto condemnation and the rest will I set in order when I come. We serve him tonight not because of his gifts. We serve him tonight not because of what he can do for us. We serve him tonight because we love him. We believe in Jesus. I'm not here just, I'm going to balance his gifts with his person. So tonight, I hope that you understand what you're about to do before you take this wonderful, wonderful supper that God has prepared for you. And for me, hallelujah, let's stand. Father God, we stand in your awesome presence tonight. We ask you to cleanse us with your precious blood. 
Wash us and purify us from the things that defile the body of Christ. Lord Jesus, tonight, let us examine ourselves before we receive this supper that you have provided. Lord God, I forgive my brothers and my sisters tonight. Lord God, tonight, I thank you that you dwell in the midst of this church. Father, I give you glory and honor and praise for all that you have done. God, that you may have mercy on the individual tonight that refuses to repent, but yet takes your supper. We come before you, Lord, with repentance, with a right heart, with a right spirit, casting down all vain imaginations, every attitude that offends, every rebellious spirit, God, that would rise up in us. We lay it aside right now as we prepare our hearts, God, to receive your supper. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, praise the Lord. We're going to line up and we're going to re get ready tonight to receive the Lord's Supper. So we're going to start over here. We're going to let you come uh, from this side and then here and then here and then here and just make a circle around come back to your seat. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this to you. If you're a guest tonight, do not take this. This is one thing that's, we, there's a restrictions in the Bible you, that, that limits us and it limits me as a pastor. I cannot give this to you if you're not a part of the body of Christ. So do not take it if you're not baptized in Jesus' name yet and have the Holy Ghost, okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. I tell y'all may come. Amen. Brother, would you help? Yes, Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight, God, that night. The night that you were betrayed. You took bread and you gave it. You broke it and you gave it to them and said, this is my bread, which represents my body. Lord, you took that cup, which represents your blood, the blood of the new covenant, and you blessed it. So tonight, in the name of Jesus, as we prepare, Father God, Lord Jesus, we receive this in your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If we could have some music, please. Thank you. That's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> Hallelujah, Jesus.
Jesus' name. It's your blood that gives me life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your awesome name tonight, God. Your awesome name. Jesus' name. My Jesus. Matthew 26, 26, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take eat, this is my body, amen. Father, right now in your awesome name, we thank you, Lord, for the bread which represents your body. We receive it tonight in the name of Jesus, and we remember your body tonight, amen. You may receive the bread which represents his body. He took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. You may receive the cup which represents his blood, the blood of the new covenant. Father, we thank you tonight. For the precious blood that you shed on Calvary's cross, that we might be forgiven of all of our sins tonight, God. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for that cup that you provided for us, that table that you provided for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let's worship God. Let's thank God tonight. Let's thank God tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah tonight. Father God, I declare by your word healing in this house tonight. Heal people's bodies of sickness and disease. Heal their minds. Heal their troubled souls. Tonight, Lord, we pray. God, we stand in your presence and we thank you for cleansing us with your blood. We came, Lord, in repentance. We leave tonight in assurance in Jesus mighty name amen go to somebody and tell them you love them amen tell them you love them praise God that you're glad they're here amen in the house in Jesus mighty name amen you're dismissed in the name of the Lord thank you for being in the house of God tonight